Clayton Freck is pretty special. He has an amazing challenge athlete for son named Ezra. And from the very beginning, Clayton and Ezra and the family would come down to the San Diego Triathlon Challenge so that they can meet other challenge athletes and find out what sports would be great for them. I remember Clayton telling me that as a dad who surfed, his one concern was, and he remembers being on the beach crying, going, I don't think I'll ever be able to surf with my son. Well, over time, he realized he can do anything with his son. His son can accomplish anything in life. So Clayton decided we need to create opportunities for other challenge athletes to find what sport is right for them. And he created the Angel City Games three years ago. They're just held up at UCLA in late June of 2017. And we're talking clinics and competition, wheelchair basketball, wheelchair tennis, swimming, track and field, and archery. You had kids out there and adults trying new sports. And that's what was so special. Just seeing athletes have what I call the most important thing in life, and that's called opportunity. So I decided to go up there with my buddy Tony DeZino, one of the coolest photographers around. I wanted him to catch some black and white gritty shots of different athletes, and then I would tell their stories. So take a listen to some of the stories that came out of the Angel City Games. The swimmer. Cameron Luchas had both legs amputated above the knee at 10 months. The prosthetic legs he was provided with were held on with leather straps, and they'd fall off when he played in the jungle gym at the local playground. When he was at school, if he had to go to the bathroom, he had to go to the principal's office to have him loosen the straps on his prosthetic legs. Then his teacher saw a double above-knee amputee, Cody McCaslin, on The Ellen Show. We didn't know any other double amputee kids, remembers Cameron's mom, Kristen. Cameron's teacher reached out to Cody's mom, Tina, and Tina connected us with CAF. On Cameron's eighth birthday, Cody surprised him with a pair of running legs, courtesy of CAF and Oser, on the TV show Dateline. Cameron is now 15 years old and swimming the butterfly in freestyle for Saugus High School in Santa Clarita. Cameron's new to swimming and received the Most Improved Athlete Award this year, continues Kristen proudly. For Cameron, everything changed when he received that first set of running legs. Absolutely everything. The best day of our lives. Andrew Seelhoff was born with a vascular disease and was in constant pain. I don't think Andrew smiled for six years, his mom, Mary, recalls. When he was 13 years old, Mary, her husband Tim, and Andrew volunteered at CAF's San Diego Triathlon Challenge, and the light bulb went on for Andrew. He told us he was ready to have his leg amputated, says Mary. He saw all the kids at SDTC with prosthetic legs running around and having a great time. He was ready. When we got into the car after the event, I cried, admits Mary. It was the best day of our lives. Mary had found CAF online, and when she reached out, Travis Ricks from CAF, an amputee himself, came to the Seelhoff house to spend time with Andrew and was also there two weeks before the amputation to answer any and all of their questions. Six weeks after the amputation, Andrew woke up pain-free for the first time in his life. Andrew now plays Sid Volleyball, loves to hand cycle, and at the Angel City Games, threw the shot put for the first time and realized that he really has a talent for it. I will spend the rest of my life raising money for CAF and Sis Mary. That's a promise. JJ. Michael Miller was born missing both tibias from a genetic disorder and had his legs amputated at the age of three. His son, Joshua, also known as JJ, was diagnosed with the same disorder and had his legs amputated above the knee at 18 months. When Michael was a kid, he was never exposed to running or cycling. But from his first San Diego Triathlon Challenge at the age of two, there is not a sport out there that JJ doesn't love and excel in. When he was very young, sometimes I tried to shield JJ from the stares of other people, says his mom, Laura. But it wasn't long before I realized it was important to show JJ, not to hide. The Miller family had as many as 44 athletes as part of Team JJ at the San Diego Triathlon Challenge. And they have helped to raise over $100,000 for CAF. JJ is proud of his legs, continues Laura. 
How many kids can say they've had Scooby-Doo, Mickey Mouse, and Minions, and Star Wars showcased on their lights? No limits. Taylor Beecher has brachial plexus, and for most of her running days, she's been competing on the track and across country with the other able-bodied kids at the school. Then she discovered that there's an event called the Paralympics, and she could one day compete at the highest level against people who share her particular challenge. At the CIF 2017 State Championships, where all kids, no matter what their challenge, are able to toe the line, she took a silver medal at 100, 200, and 400 meters. There are absolutely no limits to her confidence into what she feels she can achieve. My goal is to participate in the 2020 and the 2024 Paralympics, says Taylor. Here's some good advice. Don't ever bet against her. Jaws. John and Heidi Asher were facing a tough decision. Their son Asher was born without a fibula in one leg. Do you try to save the leg or do you amputate? We chose amputation, recalls John. They removed Asher's lower leg and before he knew it, he was walking. A year ago, Asher received his first running leg courtesy of Oser and CAF. Asher had all sorts of options when it came to decorating his prosthetic, but since his goal in life is to be a diver and get into a shark cage, his choice was pretty easy. A cool scene from Jaws. The best Batman. Gabriel Scanlon was born with spina bifida, a love of the color yellow, and a huge affinity for Batman, his favorite superhero. What sports does young Gabriel like? Pretty much all of them. At the Angel City Games, he was competing in the 100, 200, 400 on the track, plus the shot put in discus. Plus, he showed his hoop skills during the wheelchair basketball clinics. Gabriel, I asked, Adam West, George Clooney, Michael Keaton, Ben Affleck, Christian Bale, they've all played Batman. Who is the best Batman? A big smile from a young man sporting yellow and black stripes on his socks. I am the best Batman. Just like Abby. Abby Arney was born three months premature with a double brain bleed and cerebral palsy. During her early years, she could barely walk. But when her parents threw her into the pool at the age of six, she found a home, a sport, and more importantly, a peer group. My goal is to get to the Paralympics, she says. There are a ton of sports out there, and Abby's goal is to get every single one a try. What makes it tough is that her left arm doesn't work. She can't wiggle her toes of the left foot. And while she has 80 to 90% usage of the right side of her body, it's less than 10% usage on her left side. People see me and don't understand that myself and so many others like me are dealing with huge issues, she says. But it's hard to know that since we aren't missing a body part or in a wheelchair. People look at us, see all four limbs, and think we're fine. The truth is that people with cerebral palsy have had damage to their brain, and just trying to walk across the street or ride a bicycle is a huge challenge. I can trip and fall down at any time, Abby continues. Keeping my balance is a really major issue. This is a brave and talented young woman who is trying to make a point. You should never judge a book by its cover. She wants other kids with CP who are sitting at home, not playing sports, to understand that having an invisible challenge like hers doesn't make life any less challenging. She is out to change perceptions for those athletes dealing with cerebral palsy and to let them know that it's time to live every day to its absolute fullest, just like Abby. The Surfer. Jake Pacheco has cerebral palsy and didn't find a sport until he was 17 years old. Not being able to play sports, I felt like I was trapped in a cage and just couldn't figure out how to undo the lock, he insists. His mom put him in baseball, but he hated it. In high school, he was on the football team as a quarterback and running back. They named me 12th man of the year, but I never got on the field, he continues. He went to college in Fresno and received his master's in sports coaching at Long Beach State. Three years ago, he was out with a friend trying to learn to surf while getting pummeled in seven to eight foot waves. I kept getting trounced, he laughs. I was back in the van afterwards changing clothes when this guy started pounding on the van. His name was Dan Sindel and he goes, dude, I wanna help you learn to surf. Dan Sindel taught Jake how to surf from the prone position. The next thing you know, Jake goes head to head with Christian Otter Bailey, a legend in the sport of surfing at the Adaptive World Surfing Championships in La Jolla, and he takes second place. Throughout his life, 
Jake was told that he would never be an athlete. And as he was hunting for coaching jobs after getting his master's degree, people told him that he couldn't coach, that athletes would never take him seriously because he walks a little differently than they do. He's definitely an elite athlete. That's what happens when you get invited to Oahu to surf in the Duke Surf Classic. And when it comes to coaching, Jake is working with underprivileged kids as a coach for the LA Galaxy. Jake's message is a simple one. Athletes with disabilities deserve the same opportunities as everyone else. Emma. Emma Lamore was born with cerebral palsy and a club foot. At the age of six, she started swimming, and now at 14, she's thinking about the next Paralympic Games in Tokyo in 2020. Being an athlete with CP is really tough, she says. My legs don't cooperate very often. At the Angel City Games, Emma was giving the track a try. We had a few CP athletes together in our races, and our main concern was to try to figure out how to stay inside the lanes, she laughs. That can be a huge challenge. from baseball to the javelin. Cody Jones was born with cerebral palsy and it affects the left side of his body. Stuff happens in life, he shrugs. I knew the left side of my body was always going to be a problem. Growing up, he watched his dad play what he calls old man softball and figured that if Jim Abbott of the Angels and Yankees could play professional baseball using one arm, maybe he could try to play ball as well. I played left field first base and pitched on our high school team, he recalls. I never ever heard of adaptive sports. That was about to change. The LA Times wrote a piece on Cody during his senior year in high school, and Kathy Sellers, who happens to oversee the US Paralympic track and field team, read the article and reached out to Cody's coach. In 2013, Cody started working with the throwing coach at Cal Lutheran, and the next thing you know, Cody Jones is throwing the shot put, the discus, and the javelin, which turned out to be his best event. He missed making the 2016 US Paralympic team at the trials, but when Russia was booted from the games, Cody received that magical call and he was on his way to Rio. It was such a cool experience, he continues. I remember walking in the opening ceremonies and thinking, I can't believe I'm here. I can't believe I made it. He not only made it to Rio, he made it to the finals and took eighth in his first Paralympic games in the javelin. Next up for Cody Jones, how about a medal in Tokyo? adrenaline from sport. 10 years ago, Walter Escamillo was in a car accident and was paralyzed. I thought my life was over, he insists. I loved riding my bike and thought I would never be able to do that again. I wondered ever be able to take my kids to the park. Through the Triumph Foundation, he was introduced to hand cycle and when he's not playing wheelchair basketball, he's out on the roads in the hand cycle he received from the Challenge Athletes Foundation. I just love getting out on the bike trails or heading to the beach, he continues. The adrenaline that comes from sport is something you can't find anywhere else. And being able to be with my family and be active is what I live for. I didn't want to be known as, we couldn't go anywhere because dad's in a wheelchair guy. I wanted to be that dad, we went everywhere and dad's in a wheelchair. Options. Lots and lots of options. Ella Rodriguez has never met a sport or an activity that she didn't want to give a try. She had her leg amputated at nine months, but as a kid, she immersed herself in soccer, field hockey, golf, plus tap, jazz, and ballet. She also plays the ukulele, the trumpet, the drums, and is teaching herself to play the piano. Living in the small town of Gilroy, California, even though she's incredibly active, she was also incredibly lonely. Ella wrote a Christmas letter, remembers her mom, Susan. In it, she asked to meet someone like her, someone who was also an amputee. Travis Ricks from CAF, an above-knee amputee who was part of the program's team at CAF, saw the letter and reached out to Ella and her family. Ella came to the San Diego Triathlon Challenge in La Jolla, California, when she was 10 for the first time and made friends with other amputees for life. Ella started running cross-country track in sixth grade and started throwing the shot put in discus. The goal is to get to the 2020 Paralympics, even though she has no idea which is the best one for her yet. The discus is my favorite, she says, but I also love wheelchair basketball. Options. For Ella, the world offers lots and lots of options. I don't know what we would do without CAF, insists Susan. 
Dream big. Mauricio Pena, 16, was born with spina bifida. He loves wheelchair basketball and track and field. At the CIF High School meet in Clovis, California this year, he took third in 100, 200, and 400 track. Two years ago, he went to a training camp for track in Chula Vista and used a borrowed chair. A meeting with Travis Ricks from CAF led to a grant for a chair designed and built specifically for him. His mom, Diana, is his biggest fan. The long-term goals for Team Pena? Mauricio playing wheelchair basketball in the 2020 Paralympics in Tokyo. We call that dreaming big. Trooper. The year was 1981, and Trooper Johnson was only 17 years old. He was out drinking and driving one night and ended up paralyzed after crashing his car and breaking his back in two places. Looking for a competitive outlet and loving the chemistry of a team, Trooper discovered wheelchair basketball. I played on the U.S. national team from 1999 to 2004 and went to four Paralympic Games, he recalls. He ended up his playing career with two bronze medals. Now a coach, he led the 2016 U.S. women's basketball team to a gold medal and has already been named the head coach for the 2020 U.S. women's wheelchair basketball team that's going to Tokyo. He also runs BORP, the Bay Area Outreach and Recreation Program, and CAF provided grants for kids in his program, four for wheelchair basketball chairs and two for travel expenses. That way, he and CAF can work together to hopefully identify the next Trooper Johnson.